making the connection between string theory and a realization of the world as we see it. This is not something even a lot of string theorists are working on at the moment because it has been challenging. There are theories that are so granular or so down to the core, no pun intended, that we don't have the ability yeah. to test them yet. Yeah. And then it creates like a lot of problems in academia. Obviously I've had a lot of people in here have talked about string theory on both sides of the issue. And like, I get it because they haven't been able to ship a test on that. But the concept, like when you wish, in, when you listen to Dr. Kaku, like explain it, the concept makes a ton of sense. It that's would right, make that's sense. Right, that's right, that's you right. know what I mean? Like, like yeah, what, yeah, what, what do you think yeah. of string theory? Well, some of the work that I try to do is to try to understand if we can, in fact, prove string theory wrong. Not because I think it would be wrong. I, th I think it's amazing. I think it's, it's the most concrete potential uh, formulation of what could happen beyond our understanding of space and time. So, mm. so I think we should really take it seriously. Um, but it would be so cool if there was a, was a way to understand whether it could be wrong and what it would mean. And when we say string theory has no has been disconnected from reality, I don't think that's entirely true. I think um, there's been a path that was given for, for some years and it hasn't materialized the way one would have expected, but it still relies on our understanding of how physics has to be realized um, in some in some contexts at very, very high energy. Yeah. And that still has some consequences for things that we can observe within our experiments that we can that we can play with uh, today tomorrow and so there are potential tests that one can do if if we observe some specific values for some particle collisions or observations of cosmology or gravitational waves it could be that we could have signs that string theory is not the right completion of reality so it's not entirely true that it's completely disconnected to the way we can probe nature at the current state. But what I think of string theory, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, in, I think it's good to have alternatives. I think it's yes. good to have a formulation. It's the best, I think it's the best uh, game in time at the moment. There's not really any other concrete way to f formulate yes. things. Um, the fact that it's very challenging to get some uh, concrete observables out of it is... It's disappointing, but it's also that's sometimes the way it is. Um, but in the the research that I do, I try to remain relatively agnostic in the kind of high energy completion, um, what happens beyond our frontiers of knowledge um, that we could have. And I think it's it's important to keep an open eye on all sorts of possibilities. We'll see. Yeah, I, I like your attitude towards this a lot too, because it's it's been a, the the issue I think in academia where where the main arguments with string theory have come in are not necessarily to your point that people are coming up with these other theories that can compete with it or prove something better. Like I really haven't seen that. I know Eric Weinstein talked about geometric unity, which was a little controversial because he comes at it from the mathematical, like as a mathematician lens, but smart stuff. I, I just don't, I'm not smart enough to speak on the evidence there, but it's like a lot of, a lot of the issue is that, and I think Eric raises this point, is that there are so many string theorists and physicists who adhere to string theory who are, you know, I guess passively, technically like in control of, of academia in a way that is almost discrediting opportunities for other theories to formulate because it's been so ingrained. And I don't even think all that's like corrupt or anything like that. I think it's just natural. Like, oh, well, we've been studying this forever. We're trying to work to test it. So it's, like you said, it's the best game in town. And people, therefore, who come in to question it, it's more like, ah, right, we don't want to deal with that. Do you think that's a fair way of putting it? It depends a little bit on who you who you ask. Um, mm. that if you ask the people that are working on string theory, some of them, they're actually quite open-minded, particularly mm. nowadays. Some of them, they may not be too bothered about other things, and that's completely fair, I would say. Um, I think there are aspects of string theory that have actually been a huge success. Like and, what? Uh, just for instance, the, the graviton comes out of it. Mm. And that's incredible. There's no other realization where you can actually understand how the graviton comes out of it. Um, and a lot of the, w when you compute, w w 
when you compute some laws of probability, that's the way it works. The quantum world works through laws of probabilities, laws of quantum probabilities. When you compute those within a current framework, particularly when you include gravity in the game, you typically get something that doesn't make sense, that becomes an infinite quantity. Mm. And string theory resolve that. that. And that that in itself is remarkable. It actually gives you an answer that can make sense and that you could in principle trust. Now, there are different issues with it. Um, some of them, they come out with, with uh, for instance, extra dimensions. They come out with a lot of luggage along the way. Yes. And then you need to deal with all of this. And, and this has been hard to actually understand how you can get the world that we are experiencing directly out of the box from string theory. And it hasn't been like that. In fact, you have so many different possibilities that come out of string theory that it's even difficult to realize why we should end up with the world we're in as opposed mm. to anything else. But that's a slightly different question. There are still a lot of success from string theory. And so I think there's a there's definitely some value in keep working and making progress in, in string theory. But it is true that uh, making the connection between string theory and a realization of the world as we see it, this is not something even a lot of string theorists are working on at the moment because it has been challenging uh, to make progress in that. So a lot of string theorists now, they work on slightly different questions mm. of string theory. Like what? Um, for instance, have you heard of um, holography? I don't think so. No. Uh, okay, that's it. I'm not. I'm not a string theorist. I'm not an expert in holography by any stretch of imagination. Today you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so one of the cool things that came up from from string theory is the realization that you can think of. Um, gravity, you can think of a system which is gravitational, you can have black holes, you can have all of these really, really cool things that come out of, of gravity. Um, but in fact, all of the information about that is encoded on a projection. Projection. And a projection. It's a holography. It's a, it's, it's a hologram. Mm. Um, now, the geometry of that is something you may not have heard of. It's it's called anti de Sitter space. Definitely and haven't heard of that. <laughs> so now you should write it on your mug today. Yeah, we'll write it on the next mug. I still <laughs> yeah. won't remember it the next time, but keep going. Um, so that, that that's just a, a little aside. Um, but you can have, you can think of um, where gravity is as being a space time, which has a boundary. And the information which is on that boundary carries as is as relevant and can from that you can derive all the quantities that you want. You can derive all of the observable equivalent observables as you would want as compared to a theory which would have gravity in what we call the bulk or or the fully fledged um extra dimension theory. Mm. So you can have um, a theory of gravity, which is in fact completely equivalent to another model without gravity of fields, which um, may satisfy some specific properties with some specific symmetries in one lower dimension. So that's a uh, projection. Mm -hmm. um, and that what we call a duality between that. And so that enables us to understand gravity, in fact, not as a gravitational theory, but as another kind of theory with which we have much more control of and with which we can make a lot of um, progress in terms, particularly in terms of calculations and mm -hmm. particularly in terms of understanding what happens when the system becomes so complicated, it, inter it interacts with, it, with itself so much that it's hard to keep track of everything is doing. And so you need to have a slightly different perspective in how to look at everything. And you can do that. Mm. And, and people are even nowadays making connection between that and systems which are condensed matter system, like real physical system that um, don't involve gravity at all. And yet they have some description which are dual to gravitational theories. Mm. And so you can have gravitational theories that involve black holes and and you can try to understand, for instance, how information gets lost or would be restored when, when a black hole evaporates. Wait, what do you mean by information? <laughs> okay, maybe we should. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And by the way, for everyone out there, Every sentence Claudia says, I could technically go back and ask a question on it, but I don't want to ruin your flow. So there's some things we'll come back we'll to. Come, yeah, yeah, we'll come back. For sure. Okay. Let me, let me stop there. Uh, we can go back to, to black hole information and, and all okay. of that because that's going to uh, attention. But all I'm saying is that 
there's a this is the way science works, right? You you have you try to make progress in a particular direction, and maybe you're going to make progress into the question you were originally asking about, and and you do you do have a much better picture of what could go beyond our understanding of space and time. Um, for instance, in string theory or alternatives to string theory, but also along the way, you get up with all sorts of different understanding which you never thought would come out of it. Mm. And that's how you that's how you make progress, and yes. you need to keep on exploring. You need to keep on exploring all of those possibilities. So you do believe, if I'm understanding correctly, you do believe that regardless of the outcome of string theory being correct or incorrect, there are ideologies there that have been able to spark the idea of other things that actually might be provable here. That's right. That's okay. right. And it's not so much of ideology, it's 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 a scientific research. It's yeah. going forward into probing what what is possible. Mm. The graviton part though. You said that came out yes. of this too. Yeah. When when did that happen? And can you explain the graviton to people? Because we're gonna that's at the at the center of massive gravity and, and the things you work on as well. So it's gonna be important to have that context. Yeah. So um, we celebrated 100 years of quantum mechanics this we year. We did. I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, to understand the graviton, it's, it's, it's useful to, to combine a little bit uh, gravity and quantum mechanics. But le let, me, let me start with something slightly different, which I th hopefully is a little bit more familiar, which is, which is light. We're all familiar with light. light. Uh, hopefully yes. we're familiar with light. And light is a wave. And light, light is an electromagnetic wave. Um, it's just a fancy way to say that it's um, there's a field which is an electric and magnetic field, and, and when light comes from from everywhere, it's actually um, some vibration in this electromagnetic field. Mm. And light comes in with a particular frequency and carries some energy. And in principle, the light in this room, you could say, um, let's imagine we just had light of one color. Now this is light of multiple colors together mm -hmm. is white light but let's imagine we just had one color of light one frequency of light and you were to dim down the intensity of light in this room there would come a point where you will start saying that it's it's not continuous you can't completely dim down light to um, as much as you want there will come a point where you realize that light is actually carried n not by something you can dial at which but in fact by a discrete level of energy so for light of particular color, in, we know that it's carried by particles, which we call photons. Mm -hmm. and, and those photons, they are the carrier of the electromagnetic wave. They are the carrier of light. Um, photon are the particles responsible for electromagnetism. Mm. And you can even think, uh, in fact, if you have um, two electrons or two charged things, mm. um, so if we all have... No of static, for instance, if yes. I were to, to do static with my hair, whatever. Every morning I do that. <laughs> you I got to look wet my hair. It's crazy. <laughs> so you know about that. Um, you, you, can, you, you know that there's some sort of force at a distance, and you can ask yourself fundamentally, how, how is this force at a distance uh, transmitted? Mm. What is the carrier? What is the fundamental messenger of the static, of the electro, electromagnetic force? And fundamentally, it's a particle, which is the photon. That's a fundamental particle, mm -hmm. and we understand that very well. Uh, now, the reason why I'm starting to talk about light and all of this is because there's a direct analogy with gravity. And the same thing exactly happens with gravity. Um, there's an analog of light for gravity, which... Uh, an analog of light? What does that mean in English? So, light is related to the electromagnetic force. Yes. And, and so that force, I can think of, instead of the electromagnetic force, I can think of the gravitational force. Okay. And so if uh, the electromagnetic force has... <laughs> Trying to wrap our Just brains keep around. going. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to wrap our Gio brains around. and I were looking at each other like, did you get that? Yeah, we like, got it. Nope. <laughs> I'm like, just keep going. <laughs> By the way, we have Gio Gusson in the studio today. Long time friend of the podcast. <laughs> but please continue. Go ahead. Tell me what you got. <laughs> That's, still picking up the pieces here. <laughs> 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 um, he's going to start shilling it's NFTs <laughs> if we let him keep going. <laughs> but you were saying okay. the electromagnetic something or other. and 
<laughs> that's easy, no? That's the easy part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we'll have a, a scratch course on the, on string theory, and then we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll go on that. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, okay. Y let me just say, um, if you think of electricity, if you think of the electric force, you know, you know about the electric force. Um, there's something that transmits the information between two electrons. If you know they're going to repulse each other, something fundamentally has to be there to transmit the information. And fundamentally, you can think of the messenger of that being the photon. Mm -hmm. Now, you can think of the same thing exactly for the gravitational force. You can imagine you have a planet and it's orbiting the sun. Um, how do you know... What is carrying the information about that force at a distance, which is a gravitational force? And so fundamentally, the carrier of the gravitational force, the carrier of gravity, is a particle, and that's a hypothetical particle. We haven't detected it. Maybe we'll never detect it. But we do have stronger um, theoretical evidence. It has to be present. Why can't we, we detect it? It's too small to be able to test? Yeah, the yeah. effect of a single graviton would be too small to have an effect which w will um, go beyond Heisenberg and sanity principle mm. with current experiments. Yes. So it's too small. That, yeah. That, yeah, it's too weak. It's far too weak. Um, but yet, we think that there is a fundamental particle associated with the gravitational force. And so if you're thinking of the analog of light, the analog of light are the gravitational waves that mm -hmm. have been observed. Um, this is the shaking of those mirrors in interferometers. This is the passing through of gravitational waves. And they, those gravitational waves are actually, in fact, granular. We don't see that they're granular because the, the, the pieces of sand that would make those gravitational waves are so, so, so tiny. But if we were able to zoom in into those structures, we'll see that they're made out of tiny little pieces of energy, which we call gravitons. Mm. And so the graviton is the fundamental particle associated with the gravitational force. And when did we come to that conclusion? How many years ago was that? So uh, gravitation, um, Einstein's theory of general relativity, Einstein's theory of gravitation was 20, in 1915. 15, yeah, yeah. 1915. And quantum mechanics uh, came about 100 years ago. Very naturally, already by... Um, 1927, 1929, there was some understanding that the fundamental laws of physics were carried by particles. So already by the early 1930s, there was some understanding that you could have such things as photons and gravitons. Definitely by the late 1930s, it's, That's been, amazing. it's been known that there were those fundamental particles. That's amazing that that long before like a computer, for example. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah, could yeah. come up. Yes. Like there yeah. were people smart enough, like an Albert Einstein and yeah. many other people yeah. who probably yeah. should have recognition as well that could theorize something like this. And actually, even if they're not 100% right or anything, they're in the right direction. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.